Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Frank Can Do It. If I can do it, so can you. Today we will be eating amazing sushi burritos. It is also called sushi rito. Today's recipe is challenging, rewarding, and taste altering. Eating this burrito will change the way you experience eating food. It is creamy, spicy, crunchy, sour, flaky, sweet, crispy, and fresh, with an amazing explosion of flavors and textures all at the same time. First time I ate this was in California many years ago. That restaurant no longer exists. I have tried numerous of other places and all of them have been disappointing. This is the best sushi burrito you will ever have because you'll be able to make it exactly the way you like it. All right, get ready to take a screenshot of the ingredients. Because of the number of ingredients needed for this dish, I have created a separate add-on video that shows how to make the ingredients and where to buy them. Please find the link below for that video. For this recipe, you'll need sliced cucumbers, sliced avocado, fried butterfly shrimp cut in half, crab salad, tsunomo salad, masago, wasabi flying fish roe, katsuo fumi furukake, and wasabi, seaweed salad, spicy mayo, wonton strips, crispy baked kale, your favorite sashimi fish, we chose tuna and salmon. I also have parchment paper, some vinyl gloves, some roasted seaweed, steamed short grain white rice, homemade habanero citrus sauce, some chopped green onions and jalapenos, and of course wasabi and soy sauce, a bamboo sushi roller, along with the cutting board, and finally a nice serrated knife. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we do is take out your roasted seaweed. Then place the sheet in a landscape or horizontal position. Normally, the shiny side needs to be face down. But for this burrito, we will have the first sheet with the shiny side up, and we will have the second sheet with the shiny side down. It is made from dried, pressed seaweed. Koreans call this gim. Japanese call it nori. Using your gloves, go ahead and spread out the rice evenly in a thin layer across the sheet. The reason why I use the gloves is it prevents it from sticking to your fingers. It's important to put a thin layer at the very top edge. This will act as a glue to attach the second sheet. Now for the second sheet, face the shiny side down. I do this in order for the rougher edge on the first sheet to be able to grip better when you're rolling. And with the second sheet having the traditional shiny side on the exterior. And again, spread the rice evenly across the sheet. The amount of rice you put on the second sheet is determined by how big you want your burrito to be and how much rice you like. For this medium sized burrito, I go about halfway up. The very first ingredient I add is furikake. Furikake is a mixture of dried seasoning that makes the rice taste delicious. Of course you can make your burrito any way you want, but I recommend you place the flat ingredients first. So next, I typically add a thin layer of seaweed salad. Just remember, you want a right balance of all of the ingredients. So I spread out an even layer. Then, I normally add tsunomo salad. This adds important great flavor, but has a slight vinegar taste. So adding too much will be overwhelming. So I normally place single slices across the burrito. It is also important not to pass this midpoint. That will make it easier to roll your burrito. In order to stay with the theme of freshness, I usually add the sliced cucumbers next. 
followed by the sliced avocados. Then I sprinkled some chopped onions and chopped jalapenos. If you or your guests do not like spicy foods, then you can skip the jalapenos. Otherwise, a small amount will give a nice fresh kick to the burrito. The next ingredient I usually add is the habanero citrus sauce. Although this is a little spicy, this added flavor takes the burrito to a whole new level. Again, if you don't like to eat spicy food, just drizzle a small amount for the flavor. Next, I add a little bit of masago. Masago resembles tobiko. Both are small, crunchy, salty fish eggs. But I like masago because it is smaller than tobiko. Then I add some wasabi flying fish roe. For me, this is not a must, but just adds color and a little different flavor. This is usually where I squeeze in a row of fried butterfly shrimp. Again, please do not use fried coconut shrimp. To me, the coconut shrimp will ruin the flavor of the burrito. I also add a thin layer of baked crispy kale. Then I fill in the gaps with creamy crab salad. When rolling the burrito, the crab salad will fill in all the small little gaps. Then I like to add the sashimi in one single row. For this burrito, I am adding both salmon sashimi and tuna sashimi. Again, this is all according to your preference. Another family favorite that we like to add is some unagi or some eel. That is what usually is on the dragon roll. Then we add the spicy mayo on top of the sashimi. I normally put three times the amount that is shown here. And finally, I add a single row of the wonton strips for that added crunch. When making this burrito, I recommend try using all of these ingredients at least once. That way you can experiment with which ingredients you like and which ones you can live without. It is important that you do not pass this point. Staying behind this area will make it much easier to roll your burrito. Go ahead grab the bottom along with the bamboo roller and roll towards that center point. Curl your fingertips inward and squeeze firmly. Make sure that when you squeeze, you not only squeeze with your fingers, but your entire hand. Then place the parchment paper under the burrito in a diamond shape. With one corner pointing towards you and one corner pointing away from you. If any of the contents fall out, simply press back into the burrito. Wrap the burrito with the parchment paper. Then using the bamboo roller, go ahead and tuck and roll the burrito. Squeeze firmly while rolling. Once you have rolled the burrito completely over the parchment paper, twist each end. As you twist the ends, the fillings of the burrito will be pushed inward making it nice and tight and easy to eat. Finally, with the serrated knife, go ahead and cut the burrito in half. I use a serrated knife to cut quickly through the paper. Another great thing about the burritos is that you can experiment and name your own creations. Everyone in my family has their different favorites. You can customize each burrito to any one. So they have an amazing personal experience with all the different flavors and textures. Keep in mind that some of these burritos can get very big. I personally can only eat one or two. But this guy can put down four or more. There are only certain things that make this guy smile. And this is one of them. The Korean word of the day is hengboke, which is the Korean word for happy. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more amazing eating experiences, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.